Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to Coffee and Higher Chemistry. Um, last time we talked about molecules. We talked about the fact that a molecule can behave almost like a little bar magnet. It can have a dipole with a slightly positive end and a slightly negative end. We looked at the conditions that were necessary for that to happen. First of all, your molecule cannot be totally symmetrical. And second, there has to be a large delta En, a difference in electronegativity between the atom at one end uh, and the other end of the covalent bond. Then this bond becomes polarised, and as I said, if it's not totally symmetrical, the whole molecule becomes polarised. Today, I want to have a look, and the reason this is on here, of course, is that's where we get our En values from. Today, I want to have a look at a few things. Um, I've done a brief review of polarity in molecules. I would like to look at consequences of that. And then I'd like to just brush up on um, some conditional terms that I've used weasel words. A politician is so beloved of um, that I've said a large delta en. Just exactly what does that mean? Let's start with consequences. Who cares about molecules being polar? Well, um, if I were to um, let's do consequences. Eh? Consequences of polarity. SQA needs you to know about three of them. Um, I would like you to know about three slightly different ones that are more important in the real world. The beautiful landscape. When you look at the window in the north of Scotland here, the hills and the glens and the lochs, all of that, interestingly, all of it, the entire shape is a consequence of the polarity of water molecules, which we'll come back to look at later. Second, <laughs> although this will age very rapidly, of course, as a reference, but at the moment it's relatively um, relevant, uh, the fact that you can wash the COVID-19 virus right off your hands with nothing harsher than just soap and water. There's a reason for that. And guess what? It's to do with polarity. And lastly, let's throw in a small other reason. Oh yeah, all existence of any life on this planet is down to the polarity of water. You see, we'll look at it later on, but water should actually have a boiling point of eh, around about minus 100, which means... It should be a gas up here at room temperature, and so should you, and all the water in your body as well. Um, were it not for a particular type of bond that's a consequence of uh, polarity, but we'll come back to that in, in a separate. We'll come back to that in a separate um, sheet. I've got an experiment for you to try over the summer holidays based on this as well. Let's let's look at the SQAs ones though. Number one, they want you to be aware that a polar molecule, so polarity will. In other words, if you have a molecule which is polar, let me, for example, we'll draw two examples. Actually, I'll get two models because I forgot to mention them in the last video. Excuse me, just two seconds. Sorry about that. Short of resources here in the house. Turns out I can't have the two mo mo models. I've not got enough chlorines, but that's okay. We'll have this um, and this, by the way. Remember, we looked at this last time. This is CCL4. This is totally symmetrical and therefore is non-polar. Despite each one of these bonds being polarised, the whole molecule is all pulling equally in opposite three dimensions and you get no polarity. If you screw up that symmetry by doing this, for example, so this is now CCL3H. Um, this is now non-symmetrical and has got a large delta En in its bonds, so therefore this is a polar molecule. So if we put these aside for a second, and we'll do, um, here we'll do the polar one. So CHCl3, that's the polar one. And we can contrast that with um, CCl4. What will polarity affect for these two molecules? It'll affect three things. Number one, melting and boiling points. It will be higher for the polar molecule. Makes perfect sense, of course, because if you have got a little bar magnet um, and you have another bar magnet next to it, then the positive end of one will stick to the negative end of the other. You'll get an attraction here. Um, these are called intermolecular forces. I think I've thrown that term at you before. We're going to come back to look at intermolecular forces in an upcoming video in detail because there are a few types and you, you actually know one type already, a London dispersion forces. And there are another two types of intermolecular force that be that uh, you need to be aware of. But we'll come back to them in a different video. I don't want to ramble too long today. So basically, melting and boiling points will be higher for the polar and lower 
for the non-polar. Uh, effect number two. Um, we're going to look at viscosity. Viscosity is a great word. Um, and it's gloopiness, basically. Hopefully you remember that from National 5. So something with a high viscosity is like syrup, and something with a low viscosity is like water, a glass of water. Um, and the viscosity, I'm hoping you can predict now, because this molecule here is polar, it will be attracted to its neighbour more strongly. So I'm hoping you can guess what will happen to the viscosity. So viscosity will be higher for polar molecules and lower for non-polar molecules. Um, a nice example of this is, I don't know if you've ever seen petrol. Uh, you've ever actually seen petrol in the flesh, as it were. Petrol is just a more or less colourless liquid, slightly yellow colour to it. But interestingly, if you see it splashing around and, and moving from place to place, it's actually runnier than water. Now that's a wee bit difficult. If I use that phrase, runnier than water, you're probably going, what? But if you've seen it, or if you do see it in the near future, have a close look at the way it moves, and it is actually runnier than water, because petrol is close enough, as all the alkanes are, to non-polar. Um, and effect number three, uh, solubility. Now this is a big one. Uh, this one crops up a lot, both in real life, actually. I use this one all the time in real life. Um, and the SQA love it as well. Um, because what you tend to find is that... Uh, Polar solids will, or liquids actually, will dissolve in other polar things. Stuff? It's not a very technical word. Now, what does that imply about these guys here? This implies that, uh, go with it. I should have stuck with the colour code, shouldn't I? I do apologise, I should have done that in green, and I should have done this in red. So this means that non-polar solids and liquids will dissolve other non-polar stuff. It's a bit cliquey, isn't it? The non-polars stick together and the polars stick together and they don't end mix with each other. Um, a beautiful example of this that everybody knows because they've learned from a very young age, nobody actually questions why, is the fact that the phrase, you know the phrase oil and water don't mix? You can see that, go to the kitchen, put some vegetable oil in a glass, stick some water in it, leave them alone for five minutes, you get a lovely two separate layers. And the question is why? Nobody ever asked that, what? shouldn't they both mix? They're both liquids. <clears throat> Now we know why. Vegetable oil or cooking oil, whatever type of oil, is pretty much non-polar. Water is very polar. So that is why the two layers exist in your glass. That's why it's difficult to wash up stuff that's oily or greasy. The oil and grease does not have the same polarity as the water and doesn't want to mix with it. Speaking of which, um, let's throw a new word at you. Not just yet. The, the phrase the SQA uses is like... dissolves in like. So uh, non-polar dissolves in non-polar, and polar dissolves in non-polar. I think I just said that the wrong way around. Two seconds. <laughs> I don't have video editing capacity, so let me just state that again. Sorry. Polar dissolves in polar, and non-polar dissolves in non-polar. Um, that is the reason you can dissolve salt in water quite happily. And you cannot dissolve salt in petrol, and it's also the reason you can dissolve wax in petrol, which is more or less um, that. Petrol's more or less octane. It's not quite. It's close enough. Whereas you couldn't dissolve salt in petrol, and you can't dissolve wax in water. Um, so, like dissolves in like, guys. Um, an example of this in the real world is also, I don't know if you've ever found it sticky, you found a sticky label on something that you bought, you take the label off and then you're stuck with the glue. <laughs> stuck with the glue, sorry. Um, you're stuck with the glue uh, leaving a nasty mark behind on the surface. Well, if you spray it with, uh, you can try washing it off with the water all day, you're wasting your time, the glue is not polar, the glue is non-polar. So you can wash it off with other non-polar things like oil. Now you probably don't, don't put vegetable oil on your thing, that's probably not going to work well, but um, 
you could dissolve it off, depending on what the surface is, with something like WD-40, which is spray oil for door hinges. Um, so, how about that? Polarity affects three different things. If I have this molecule here, which is non-polar, then this will have a lower viscosity, it will have a lower melting boiling point, and it will only dissolve other non-polary things. As soon as I make it polarised by screwing up its symmetry, now this instantly has a higher boiling and melting point, it's more viscous, it's more gloopy, um, and it will be really good at dissolving other non-polar things. Um, before we leave, I would like to throw a word at you. The word today is... Missable. Looks like it should be mix. mix. It's actually, it means the same as mixable. That's exactly what it means. So um, that's what missable means, and the SQA want you to be aware of that. Um, so that's uh, so. Um, polar liquids are missable with other polar liquids, and non-polar liquids are missable with non-polar liquids, but not the opposite way around. I did say I was going to throw um, my weasel word out the window um, because I said here that. Uh, let me go and get my spreadsheet. It's not a spreadsheet, it's a flow chart, you silly old fool. Um, so this is from last time. Is my molecule polar? Is it completely symmetrical? Yep, it's never going to be polar. Is it not completely symmetrical? Could be then. It depends on this, this word here. Is there a large delta EN? Now, um, in our next video, we're going to have a look at this. And I did say that there are more than one type of intermolecular forces. And we're going to start classifying these types based on this number here. Because everybody flaps about what is, what is large, is 0.5 enough, if 0.4 enough? The truth will come out in a later video on something called the bonding continuum. Thanks for listening just now. Bye.